What is good? We're back. And we're better than ever and ready to roll. Three off there, huh? Uh-huh. Guys ready, ready on the sound. Here we go. Guys been slacking. The ah. Soundboard fingers aren't as fast as they used to be. You know? Getting old. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So today we are a few days away from the NFL draft and we have wrapped up all of our Superflex tight end premium ADP. We've got tons of mocks post combine. And before we got into the next iteration of the ADP, we wanted to hit you with kind of where these uh, rookies fall, the guys they're falling around, and you could trade for this or you could trade for that. You could trade for this or you could trade for that. Um, and then we could kind of give you the order of we pulled these up, got all the rookies out, and we could have them on the left hand side of your screen. And we can kind of you can see the order of how those guys actually rank in the ADP. And then on the right side of the screen, we have the actual overall ADP. So lots of stuff to look at here, but just thought it was a good end of way to end this cycle of saying, all right, so the first 12 guys, we got Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Jaden Daniels, Roma Dunze, Drake May, Brock Bowers, Brian Thomas, JJ McCarthy. Uh, Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell, and Lad McConkey. So if those, that would be your top twelve rankings essentially. If you just pulled them straight out of our ADP over the tons super and tons. flex startup ADP, right? But basically, I'm saying like if that was your, those could almost be your rookie rankings, sort of, because that's what the ADP is suggesting. And then you could put that up against your ranking and see where the discrepancies are. Um, and then you know, right off the rip, you got Caleb Williams is the QB nine overall and super flex startup. Uh, ADP 112 he's going in the average of all of our startups fair price I got to be honest with you this or that I, I'm mostly taking Caleb Williams here I, I want the mystery box um, nine out of ten times here like we could get crazy with all sorts of packages and the one one if you sent me a crazy offer with another good quarterback in it I would probably take it but for the most part if we're talking any one one swaps here with anybody that's around him you know, if you were flush with quarterbacks and you could get CD Lamb and Jamar Chase, I or, guess sure go for that. Uh, you know, I'd be fine. Anthony Richardson, you could raise the question of, hey, at least I've seen it a little bit and how quick those fantasy points could pile up. But for the most part, I'm, I'm going to take Caleb Williams here uh, and, and be excited that I got the 101. This is a long draft cycle. People drum up anything they can. I've been excited for this guy for two years. Uh, he's as close as something special that we've had in a few drafts here. Uh, and, you know, have they always worked out? No. But Caleb Williams seems to have all of the bits and pieces of, that you want, intangibles uh, of, you know, being able to r run around, move around. The surrounding cast wasn't excellent, and he was doing outstanding uh, things time after time with that UFC, USC offense. So I'm, I'm just going with Caleb here. This guy's a, a playmaker, a baller, so much fun to watch. Uh, and at the next level, I think it's going to be more of the same. So and I think he's going to a really decent spot, and they've done a good job of providing him to hit the ground running. Uh, and they have another pick at nine, the Bears, that is. So I'm pretty much taking Caleb Williams here at the 101. I'm not doing this or that. I'm mostly taking that, uh, mostly taking Caleb Williams here. So we go to the next guy. We got Marvin Harrison. If you look at the ADP on the right-hand side of things, you know, guys around him, you have Kyler Murray, Amon Ross St. Brown, Bijan, Trevor, Jordan Love, Brees Hall. Um, you know, like I said, this is a ton and ton of drafts. So you say whatever you want about, i got to get in drafts with these guys regardless. Um, these are some pretty good players that are drafting a lot of these as well through, through the patron and all that stuff. Uh, but we've done this a bunch uh, through these top guys, and I've, I've stayed the course of, you know, if, if you give me Marv or Bijan, I'm probably going to take Bijan. You give me Marv or Brees, I might take Brees. You know, I, I'm, I'm okay with, with going with the known in that factor. I think Marv is great, and it's, it's no shot on Marv that those two guys are just awesome, awesome running backs. If Marv turns into... Um, you know, one of the top receivers like we project him, then it's a wash. And some people would probably ha rather have Marv because his career is going to last longer, I guess. And in 10 years, 10 years, um, you know, but that should be on the board. So 
Take, I can have it for 10 years drink. You can kind of do whatever you want with Marvin Harrison there. You know, I'm okay with swapping them out for the known of, of those really, really upper echelon pieces. Those are, we're talking about the RB1 and the RB2 in the class. Um, I, I probably wouldn't swap them out for Kyler Murray. Now, St. Brown, maybe we have a conversation about it. Mm. Um, just because we know that that's an 18 point a game guy already. Um, but I, you know, I feel like we have respect on his name, but he can't be going that high in all these other drafts. As, as they Marvin? have that, no, yeah, like Amon Ra. Oh, Amon Ra St. Brown. Um, Amon Ra St. Brown's wide receiver four in DLF ADP and wide receiver four in Fantasy Pros ADP. So right. he's right there. Um, you know, he goes twelve, and uh, looks like maybe ten is his overall in in those two. So you know. Which maybe by the time we post this video, I think this one might drop Monday. I'm trying to I'm trying to finalize this draft kit and get it to, over to the Patreons. And, you know, we've got the ADP that's available already, and it does compare DLF and Fantasy Pros, which you're not seeing on the screen here, but Casey's looking at. So, uh, I guess, I guess, I guess, all right. But, you, you, so, you, Amon Ra or Marvin Harrison Jr.? i probably stick with Marv there. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm i okay with swapping with the running back, but I, I I'm – Probably stick with Marv, although it's it might be foolish to not to not go with St. Brown there. Um, pe- the people are going with St. Brown, but it's just because mm-hmm. it's an unknown and it's really close. We're talking about a guy who's had three awesome seasons to a guy who hasn't even played, and he's two picks away from him. Uh, it's crazy. It's great, and 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 by all accounts and purposes, that Marv's going to be great. Uh, but it's, it's it's this or that, and we're basically the the idea here is to just show you around the guys who are going. Talk a little bit about if whether or not you would do this or that. Um, and for me, I'm mostly sticking with Marv. I'd go Bijan Brees, and it's mm, whew, it's a it's a real tight coin flip for St. Brown, but sticking with with uh, Marv, I think there. So next on the list is Neighbors. He's wide receiver eight. He's going two eleven for us. He would be um, the third player selected if it was just if we took this out and did kind of the rookie draft rookie rankings off of the startup ADP um, and guys around him, Puka Nakua. Um, Jimmy or Gibbs, you know, both of those guys, I would take over Malik neighbors. I know mm-hmm. people have Malik neighbors and Marvin Harrison neck and neck. I think they're pretty close. I give, I give an edge to Marvin Harrison. I just, <laughs> I just like what Marvin Harrison does a little bit more. Obviously the name cache probably weighs in there somewhere in the back of your subconscious. Yeah, he's his it, dad, but he's bigger, faster, stronger than his right. dad. Like, and he's just been a stud for you know, super long. All you know. Name neighbors. one good. Name one thing. Marvin Harrison does better than Malik Neighbors. Yeah. Uh, Can you? They're both good. Um, I I just I got a little bit more faith in what Marvin Harrison brings to the table than what just good for longer. Um, known for longer. Pressure on for longer. Um, and Marv coming out and then is there know, some shade on Marv off the field? I don't being think thrown? so. Like he's a diva. So. He's really difficult to deal with. There that was some I don't, fake news. That, that was that was for neighbors right not, not for that's what i meant yeah but i don't know who knows i mean that didn't seem like anything but maybe it is i have no idea no intel that way people, people, people like to weigh in on that and i do think that is an important aspect of this but there's no way we can really know it's like almost well, too in, late before in, we in really that, find in out in that regard like yeah it's but people want to question caleb williams you know character it's like you can't know you're not in the building. You're not in the locker room. You're not even. You're not. You're just seeing some shit on Twitter. Or yeah, I don't even think they're questioning. They're just insecure. Those those people who are questioning Kayla, there's no character really concerns there. It's not like he's a dickhead off the field. He doesn't look people in the eyes right. unless he. That's that's nonsense. Uh, but a lot of and, random and, and, shit. And I have I have no idea what's going on with Malik Neighbors. It's probably nothing since you just heard a little blip of it. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, it's it's. Maybe nothing. That's the team Pie that wants to take him, putting that out there. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. I would I I would go Gibbs and Puka over neighbors. Now you might say that's crazy because you got Marvin, but this is why we do it. Uh, if you have him and Marvin in the same tier, I do not. I have Caleb and Marvin in the same tier, and then um, Malik neighbors below them. So uh, I I might be on the island here on that one. So uh, but very good player. It's no shade on Malik neighbors by any means. He certainly could come out there and be way better than Marv. That's why we do this. That's why this is a lot of fun if I had all the answers. But right now we're giving you basically as close to 100 straight facts as we could give you because we're 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 showing you the ADP, the drafts and we're pulling the guys out around them. So this is what what the data and the information is telling us. 
Facts. That's that's it. So then we got Roman Dunze. He's coming in at, at wide receiver 11, 3 6. He's going around. Chris Olave, Roman Dunze. I'm sticking with Roma Dunze. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, sticking with uh, Roma Dunze. Um, I would stick with Puka and Jameer Gibbs uh, over Roma Dunze as well. Then we're coming in. We got Drake May. We got Jaden Daniels. They're back to back. I prefer Drake May over Jaden Daniels. Um, Which you were taking, Jaden. You, I guess you've always been a little. You were mad a, you didn't have Jaden Daniels higher all off season. It was it was for cool. you to be taking Drake May. It's a little surprising to me. I mean, I don't know which one. I've I've I've, I've had him in the same tier for a while here. I've had Jaden Dan. I, I moved Jaden Daniels up probably above him for a little while because of the rushing upside. But Drake May's really got. He's at 800 yards rushing as well. He's a big, physical dude. Um, they're, they're one's a little more athletic, but I think Drake may can give you some rushing upside as well, but he's also built a little different. And I think he's, um, I know there's tons of shade getting thrown on all the quarterbacks right now, every which way, all, all, all sorts of things. So whatever I say about may, somebody will be upset about Daniels. I like them both. I got them in the same tier, uh, like Drake may slightly ahead of him. But if I could, if I could swap it out any of those either one of those quarterbacks for Dak Prescott or or Lawrence or Love I know they're quite a bit higher in what we're showing you but some people aren't you know that's th- these are a bunch Brock? of a bunch of drafts Brock would be pretty close Give me Brock but I think I'm I think I'm going with Brock Dude, and, and how early, you not take early Brock? on in the process um I was probably May and Daniels it, probably listen, May and Daniels to, statistically speaking one of them is not going to work out Oh yeah, no, for Purdy's sure. Purdy's out. He's worked out. Purdy's for sure worked out. Um so yeah, I mean I think I think that's probably the right move. It seems like you should be able to get a little plus value with those guys because Brock being worth the one three or four seems like quite a bit. Um but you know, the uh, we have remained pretty rock steady in our ADP where he is. Brock um, steady. Bebop and Brock DLF steady. DLF and eighty and and Fantasy Pros ADPs QB sixteen QB fourteen we get them at QB fourteen in the ADP so uh, kind of kind of right around in there all that all that's falling in line so I think I think that would be the right answer but I would I would probably take May and Daniels over Tua uh, which they're right they're all right there in the same kind of area so all right so then we got Brock Bowers we're at tight end three tight end two is Trey McBride he's at four one Brock Bowers is at four five. So we're pretty close there. Sam Laporta's got way too big of a gap in him from Trey McBride to to all the other tight ends for me. Uh, I think actually Trey McBride might be the tight end one. <laughs> um, mm. But Brock Bowers around some some guys like Nico Collins, Drake London, DJ Moore, Trey McBride. If I could take Trey McBride or Brock, Brock Bowers, I probably would take Trey McBride. How could you not? Um, you know, and I and I like Brock a, a good bit. How could you not? Uh, but, you know, I would – Drake London would, would be c- real close to me. They're real close in ADP here. DJ Moore, Devonta Smith, Michael Pittman. You know, if you told me in that one set, like I, I, I'm a big tight end proponent, so it's hard for me to, to say that, but um, I would probably take most of those guys over Brock Bowers right this minute and now – you know that that could completely change here, um, but I'm right now. I'm feeling like DJ Moore, Devonta Smith, Michael Pittman, Drake London. Uh, you know all those guys. Um, I would I would probably move for that one that one seven pick, which is about where we have it, um, Brock Bowers going in overall. If that was the rookie startup, and that's about where he ends up going in all of our rookie draft data as well. Uh, as well as I would trade for Trey McBride and maybe even JT there um, if if I was needy for that running back position. And now you say might say, well, hell no, this is tight end premium, and usually I am with you, uh, but I am probably going to go with all those guys mentioned above. So out of character, might be a little too late for me to be doing this. I don't know. I don't. I might be a little. I might be a little woozy there. So. Uh, so tight end three, Brock Bowers going at 405. Next guy on the list here is. You got to scroll down. Brian, Brian Thomas, Thomas coming in at 6'3. Uh, wide receiver 27. Uh, he is around guys like Jordan Addison, Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs. 
uh, JSN, DK Metcalf. Now, I would prefer have it like JSN or Brian Thomas Jr. I'll take JSN. I know the rookie year wasn't what you wanted it to be. We could talk about the situation a little bit. We have a bunch. Brian Thomas also has some things on his on his profile where you're like, he's a lot of fun. I could take him, but if you're going to tell me 1-8 or, or JSN, I will take JSN in that position all day long. Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs, although close in here, I, I'm not sure that you necessarily have to give up that kind of capital for one of those guys not saying that i wouldn't necessarily um but i'm not sure that you do but jsn would be a big target for me if i'm in that spot uh at brian thomas because really at the end of the day brian thomas could give you you know similar production to what jsn gives you this year and then jsn really breaks out and that's all you ever get from brian thomas or brian thomas is a bona fide stud uh, but it feels like he's got the range of outcomes from anywhere from, you know, a fancy Gabe Davis to an absolute beast who's just dominating. Um, and I'm fine with taking the shots on Brian Thomas. There I have him basically ranked right in there with Xavier Worthy and Ladd McConkey. You know, J.J. McCarthy or Brian Thomas, I'll probably take J.J. McCarthy if he gets the draft capital as we're expected here. So we're 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 not quite there. So I would I would swap those two around uh, if possible. So we can jump then right to JJ McCarthy, um, JJ McCarthy or Bryce Young or Kirk Cousins. I want to say I would take Kirk Cousins. I don't like taking JJ McCarthy this high. Mm-hmm. Um, as, it, it, we're talking about a startup, uh, you know, right where I'm saying I don't like to take JJ McCarthy in a rookie draft. I'm fine with taking JJ McCarthy there. Now. If the other quarterbacks, like I said, what we've been saying, get anywhere near the draft capital of J.J. McCarthy first round, I'll gladly put them right up there. And if Michael Penix does, I'll put Michael Penix over J.J. McCarthy. If J.J. McCarthy gets the draft capital and goes to a a decent team, uh, sixth round quarterback isn't the worst, you know? No. Kirk Cousins is appealing, but he's 35 coming off a kill. He's Maurice Young is not appealing, but probably a value. I'm saying I'm probably sticking with J.J. McCarthy in a lot of these, all these guys kind of around him. I would rather have Brian Thomas. Hopefully I've figured out my quarterback situation in the startup. I'm with you on the rookie draft, taking him over Brian Thomas if it plays out on Thursday the way everyone is projecting it to play out yeah so i mean that's that's kind of where i'm at with jj mccarthy but if we're talking about guys around him here kirk cousins you're just you're getting so much younger yeah and i don't think jj mccarthy's a bad quarterback i think the hype has gotten a little little too far out of control for me Mm -hmm. um but i'm i'm i'd be okay with making a swap something along those lines but but i don't i don't think you're getting anywhere near the one eight for kirk cousins one seven for kirk cousins Mm -mm. uh at all um, so, you know, like I said, Saquon Barkley and, and Josh Jacobs, I'd probably roll with, with, uh, JJ at that point. And then, you know, so I think, I think JJ right there is a, is a stick and, and pick, I think for the most part for me, there's not really too much that would get me terribly off except for, like I said, if Penix or, or Knicks get the first round capital, I think I could be okay. More so Penix for me than Knicks. Um, I guess the move there would be if you could package that one seven up with something else to move further up this board. Right, I'd be definitely down to do that. That was, that's always going to be my stance. A lot of the times, especially you know, even with with JJ, with Drake May, with Jane Daniels, package up and see see what I can go up and get. I think that's a really good call there. Um, can I can I move up to get a more exciting quarterback? Could I trade? You know, could I get Deshaun Watson for JJ McCarthy? I would do that. I'm fine with that. Um, you know, I don't know a lot of people might, I don't like that at all. That's terrible. But I, I, I kind of know what I can get out of Deshaun Watson. And I, I think we can get back to closer to where that ceiling was. Um, so that would be somebody if we're, if we're not going too much further up and maybe could make a swap for because somebody's enamored with JJ, I would do that. Um, keeping it moving down. We got Xavier Worthy, who I think Brian Thomas, Xavier Worthy, Lab McConkey are all kind of together. I think A.D. Mitchell would be the odd man out there. I'd move him down a little bit. But once we get into these, the the startup range where these guys are kind of going, um, you know, Xavier Worthy or Rashad White, I would trade all day long Rashad White up to the pick where you have to take Xavier Worthy. Debo Samuel, if I can get a first round pick for Debo Samuel or I'm taking Xavier Worthy, I would probably uh, do so. Bryce Young would be the interesting one. If I could trade that pick and, and get into Bryce Young right there, I might take that shot. I might take that chance. I like where Carolina's going. It's just another quarterback. It's super flex. Um, the currency is quarterbacks a lot of the time. It's really hard to make a move uh, to up to another quarterback so he could be a, a bridge to something else. 
as well. Um, so, and I, I don't, I don't, I'm not considering Bryce Young a bust yet. I don't know if anybody could have succeeded in that situation, and I kind of like where they're going. So Bryce Young would be maybe somebody who's around this area right here where I would uh, make that swap. George Pickens or Xavier Worthy. Whew, that's a tough one for me. Uh, like Diggs, there's no way you're getting anywhere near that value. You know, and this is why startups and rookie values are sometimes so different. Mm -hmm. You know, Diggs, uh, even in DLF ADP, still hanging around in 7.6. Uh, in the uh, Fantasy Pros ADP 6, 602 there. Which there so, might not have been enough time since that trade. Maybe in, in all that. Really and we, we've done a decent amount of them. Um, so I, I feel okay with where we're at with him. He's dropped a little bit. This yeah, is the culmination of post-combine ADP. Right. I, I would I would love to get Xavier Worthy for Stefan Diggs. Um, sure. You're not getting a late first for no, Diggs probably. No, no. Baker, maybe I would trade. I might, I might, I might try to get into that Baker world for for that one, the late ones. If I need a quarterback, I'd be okay with that. George Pickens is the one that's interesting. Pickens or Xavier Worthy. Right now, I'm probably a little too enamored with what I, I, I'll, I'll take. George Pickens. Um, <laughs> Were you about to say you're too enamored with Worthy? I'm probably too enamored with the rookie class right now because it's been yeah. so much of what what we've been doing. Well, the value says take worthy because the general consensus is that Pickens sucks and right, Russell Pick sucks and, Pickens has gotten, and the coordinator sucks. Pickens at the end of the season he doesn't not say got a little validity and I feel like a lot of people kind of you know shut their well, when mouths. When Rudolph came uh, in and hit a right. couple deep balls and then you get but just Pickens I just feel like in general just caught a little upswing there. Well he was Showed mad he and do. a diva and everybody right. you know oh shit now, now this is really falling apart at the seams but then Rudolph comes in there throws a nice deep ball and he's better than James Washington. You know, them boys were hooking up at o Oklahoma State. Right. And that's what he could do is get behind you. And, right. Or yeah. just catch it over or around you. Yeah, I mean, he, he's... If he I, could I, just get it together and keep it together between the helmets. Maybe that's some sizes I'm creeping in there as well. So Yeah, Worthy's real small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I do, I do really, really like him. I think he's going to be really, really, really solid. Um, but Pickens just has that bona fide, ridiculous number mm -hmm. one salivating upside get the fuck off me um, kind of vibe yeah so uh i i, I would do that um like moving moving forward lab mcconkey 80 mitchell are 35 and 36 7 9 and 7 10 here um i love lad mcconkey uh any of the old wide receivers around here i don't think anybody you're getting anywhere near Devonte adams mike evans range for probably either one of those guys or even maybe troy franklin even i uh, don't think you're doing any of that uh, Javante Williams, Tajay Spears. This is probably a stick and pick area for all these guys that are kind of around here. There's a bunch of older guys. Um, you know, Hollywood Brown and Christian Kirk are guys that start to interest me a little bit. I, I think I would probably still stick with the with with the picks there, the the, the late the late ones. Um, I'm not sure that you need to give those up for those guys. I know that nobody will give you a first for Christian Kirk or Marquise Brown right now. I've tried in rebuild scenarios and it doesn't happen. So it seems like the value is better right now for those guys as we're in this position moving into the nfl draft where both those guys are probably going to get really good draft capital um, and be the the toast of the town there for a little while now that we may get to a certain point where i would rather trade down to those guys get a little something extra for kirk and hollywood but those are guys that i also really like and been touting all off season so but cooper cup and terry mclaurin and uh, mike evans Devonte adams there's no way you're trading in for any of those guys that are kind of around them so um, that's, that seems to be stick and pick. Penix is way down here. Um, now, I, would, I got Penix probably above both of those guys because I think he's going to get first-round capital. Stafford, no. Will Levis is interesting for a late round, you know, 112 basically for Will Levis. I don't think I can pull the trigger, but, but it might be a good, a really, really solid move while we're doing it. So for, for now, I think I'm sticking with those guys. But I mean, let me see how many quarterbacks get drafted in the first round here. Right. Could be coerced into saying, hey, let me, let me take it. They, they surround Levis with some talent. Uh, let's, let's see. It's uh, like a make or break year here. Let's see. Well, they're, they're doing what they should do. Put stuff around him. See if he can succeed. We're in a new offense. We got a scheme that's actually going to throw it down the field. Uh, and, and we got Nuke and we have. Uh, Calvin Ridley, uh, we have Traylon, Traylon, we have Westbrook Akine, and we've got two good running backs who can catch it. We're, we're probably going to take Alt or another offensive lineman and then uh, maybe even draft another wide receiver in the draft, and we'll and we'll see what happens. But I, I like what they're doing. Uh, you got Chig, too, who's interesting. 
So, um, and then kind of moving out of that second round, and we'll get out of here in just a second. We got, I just wanted to hit on these running backs. We got Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks. They're going RB17, RB18, 8, 8, 8, 9. There's really not that many running backs in this area that I would rather have than them just because age and and you're getting younger and it's a it's a lot of fun you can make the argument for alvin kamara and joe mixon going to score potentially a lot of points here but um I, I think i think i would rather just take the shot on both trey benson and jonathan brooks i like both of those guys a good bit i think they're both guys who can uh provide a lot of value for you uh, and i think by the time that we're this is it well not airing but by the time we're done with the draft those guys have the you know potential to be moving up two or three rounds both well two or three rounds in a startup by the time the draft's over and we and we get new adp and be end of the round first round picks uh in your rookie draft super flex tight end premium because uh, i think both of those guys are probably going to get second round draft capital and, and people are going to be pretty excited about them um whether that's the chargers or the cowboys the cowboys most certainly would would really boost one of those guys way up there like trey benson goes to the cowboys there's no way he's not going 110 yeah um in your Move rookie drafts, up. so he'd be probably moving up there. So, uh, you know, all the other kind of guys laying around here. We got um, Blake Corum. We have uh, got to go down a little further, but we have Jalen Warren or uh, Jalen Wright is is down here at RB thirty five, twelfth round. Blake Corum coming in at the tenth round. Uh, so you kind of get in that no man's land of running backs where it's old guys and, uh, and guys like Brian Robinson, who you, who you think could be something, uh, but you're not really sure. And you're not sure what the hell the uh, commanders are going to do in the draft. Um, so pretty interesting. You got Xavier uh, Leggett down here. You got uh, Roman Wilson down here in the 13th round. Uh, guys around him, Romeo Dobbs, Jacoby Myers. Uh, I'll take both of those guys uh, probably over. Uh, Roman Wilson at this point. Xavier Leggett, though, pretty interesting. Jerry Judy or Xavier Leggett, probably just re-roll with Xavier Leggett at this mm-hmm. point, um, even though people hate him uh, quite a bit. And I was looking for Keon Coleman. Late breakout I'm, or no breakout. I missed Keon Coleman up here, 10th rounder. Um, he's going around. Braylon Allen, too, but nobody wants to hear that. Yeah, no thanks. Um, no thanks to you? you you're out? I'm, you not, like I'm not out, out, but right there, I'm probably, not, I'm probably letting him fall a little further. Um, I like him at the back half of the second round of, of the rookie draft for the upside. He just needs to learn how to play with with his size. He's He's got elusiveness, good feet, speed. We don't really know. It's okay. Uh, but when he puts the pads down and, and clickety clacks, he's a lot of fun. But he doesn't always doesn't always do what you want him to do. Maybe a little too much dance and he needs to finish with power. Um, Drink. <laughs> Deion Coleman, wide receiver, 46, 10th round. So Deontay Johnson um would be i would rather have deontay johnson than keon coleman chris godwin marquise christian kirk if i could trade any of those players to get in there i probably would and we even start getting into some of the olds like amari cooper the olds. i might be you know i might be interested in in two years of amari cooper sure um right there so really just wanted to kind of go through here at, at the end of this cycle of post combine adp and we'll start building post draft adp uh after this uh, and just kind of point out where these guys are going, where they would go in a rookie draft, where their rankings kind of would pan out as far as if you broke them all out of here and just thought it was a good exercise to uh, share with you before we move forward to give you an idea of where we've been seeing guys, where you can value guys in this draft and you know trying to do our best to equate that to your rookie picks, to the veterans, to the startup picks, which are all things that are very important as we move forward to, to have a ballpark of how these guys should be valued and yes you can get way deeper in this and you can change adps around uh with who's ever in that room and it takes one guy yada 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 but uh these are important factors to start determining the values of these guys and of course they're all on a little bit of a sliding scale but i think this is a pretty good representation of kind of where we're at or at least in the ballpark so be sure to like subscribe comment below if you want to be involved in these mock drafts you can check out the five dollar holler on the patreon we got the discord that's always up and rolling we got a free discord you can go over to the patreon that's up and rolling uh we got plenty of stuff coming up for the draft we'll be going live with the patrons for day one and day two we're gonna have plenty of draft day content then coming out afterwards we've got player pages and all sorts of good stuff as a little mini rookie draft kit is is getting ready to drop on the side of uh, 
the Discord stuff. We got all sorts of good information that's going to be inside of that thing as far as stats and information and player pages. You've been seeing some of those pop up, but there's a bunch more to it. We'll have rookie ranks. I'll have rookie ranks at least. Um, and then we'll I'll be updating the actual um, overall rankings after we're outside of the draft here see who's affected see who is not and you'll be hearing all that stuff's on the ones and the twos through your speakers like subscribe comment below let me get that five star review from y'all on the podcast mm. hit that on the mm. spotify the itunes you just have to tap it you don't have to do you don't have to write anything you just go down tap tap the five stars hit, hook your boys up yeah we appreciate y'all and we'll be back uh man Take a little break. We got the draft coming up. We're gonna we're gonna hit you with a live show. Me we got Austin, Big D coming in time. Big in D town. coming into town. We're gonna do a live show on Tuesday, so be sure you check that out. Me and Austin gonna do an actual NFL mock, um, reviewing maybe one of these pundits mocks and just talking about what we like, who's going where, all that jazz. Uh, just one one more little thing before we uh, get out of this. Dude, I got the wife going out of town. Ooh yeah. We got Big D coming in town. A little draft war room. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a lot of time. fun. We will do a lot of work though. For come your on, come on over. Pleasure. Come on over with the five dollar holler. Uh-huh. Be be a part of that. Uh-huh. If not, there'll be plenty of content to follow. So keep it locked and loaded. Keep up. We'll catch you next time. Peace.